Welcome, thank you for clicking through to this video on fuel jetting for the Briggs & Stratton carburettor. This is basically a shortened version of the full video on how these carburettors work, so please do check that out if you want to know things in more detail. Of course I've used a lot of drawings here to explain my point, but let's just take a look at the carburettor itself as a whole. And that's how it should look on the side of the machine. We'll have the air box at the top, and the fuel tank at the bottom. Let's imagine now we've got x-ray vision and we can see inside the fuel tank here. This of course is the carburetor body and underneath it here is the fuel pump area and this is part of the fuel tank itself and that of course is the primer bulb. This of course is the fuel pickup pipe. This is the main jet here and that fuel vein in the middle which is the jet hole is there. So just for a very quick summary we press the primer bulb and let go fuel comes up this way and then when that's full we press the primer bulb again and fuels force down this way and then ultimately the fuel flows into here to be available for the main jet for when the engine starts. So that's how the primer system works then on this type of carburettor but let's have a look now how the carburettor works when the engine's running. Now in order to do that I'll need to show you a side view of the carburettor so if we move this one across and then I'll show this side of the carburettor here and I'll put that carburetor there. So now we've got the front view that we used to see in, and then we've got the side view. It's both the same carburetor. And we can see here, this is a cross-sectional view, of course, which will help explain my point. We can see that we've got the inlet coming into the carburetor and through. Then we've got this structure here. This is the restriction in the inlet. We call that the venturi, and we'll see what that does very shortly. And a little bit further on from here, and something that's always near to the Venturi, is the top of the main jet here, which we can see extending downwards into the fuel reservoir there. And this is the throttle butterfly here, and that opens and closes like this according to the engine's needs. And then of course we know this is the fuel pump diaphragm. And just above here, inside the carbs inlet, is another channel way. And if you look closely, you can see that it's interconnected with the main jet here via this channel here. And that brings a real benefit and we'll see what that is shortly. And just a little bit further up here, we've got another channel. This is a fuel channel. Fuel goes through and injects into the inlet of the carburetor each time that the primer bulb is pressed. And this extra fuel helps in initiating the starting of the engine. This carburetor now then is all primed up with fuel and it's ready to start. And I'll bring in this little indicator here, just so that we can see that at each stage of the carburetor's workings, what position the piston's in. OK, so now let's imagine then that the piston's on the induction stroke. And we can see there we've got air coming in because it's being drawn in by the piston lowering. And of course that air passes through the Venturi, speeds up in velocity and continues down the induction tube. And it's got that small amount of fuel with it that was injected by the primer bulb. And that heads off inside the engine to help give an initial start. But as I mentioned earlier, as this high velocity air passes the top of the main jet here, it caused that vacuum. And that vacuum drew up on all of this fuel. And then when the fuel got to the top of the main jet here, it hit the air and then atomized the fuel, what we call atomized. It mixed the air with the fuel and made it so it was more ignitable when it actually gets inside the engine. And if you notice there, I've illustrated this fuel coming out here as smaller particles than this fuel. And there's a good reason for that. Because this is the high pressure area, that air has hit that fuel so hard that it's really put that fuel into tiny little molecules, if you like. Whereas this one, this one was injected in and it was lying at the bottom there on the inlet and the air just came through and simply picked it up and took it into the engine. So the reason we initially inject this fuel is to get in the engine first and initially help start the engine. And then when the engine started, it's this fuel that keeps the engine running. And so we've established that we've got that vacuum there. And of course, that vacuum has pulled the diaphragm up and of course, Pulling the diaphragm up means that it's drawn some fuel up beneath it. And because the piston's still lowering on the induction stroke, it's pulling all that air and fuel in towards the engine. Well, this butterfly won't open until the engine's took hold and is running quite fast. So the air and fuel at the moment escapes around the sides of this butterfly because it doesn't shut completely closed, it's just slightly open. And also there's a little hole here on the right hand side, air can also go through there. So the air and fuel mixture that is, 
goes alongside it and through that little hole and that's enough to get the engine initially started but let's remember this is still only one stroke of the piston so the piston's still only coming down this is just a breakdown of all that's happening whilst it does so if we look here we've got fuel coming out of this main jet and that fuel of course is supplied by the reservoir here at the bottom and that reservoir of course is emptying as that fuel is leaving for the engine and the fuel is being drawn out of here accelerated out if you like by two means of course this way here where we've got the main jet we've got the air rushing past the top drawing that fuel out but at the same time we've got this channel here now this channel comes out to the inlet area there and what happens is that as the air comes through it enters that channel there and travels down through it and because this channel is directly connected to the main jet and the fact that there's already a vacuum coming out there so there's already suction coming up and the fact that this air coming down here is under pressure as well because of the force of the air coming inwards when that air actually meets the fuel here it mixes with the fuel and maintains a flow through and out through the jet there in that direction and so a combination between a vacuum pulling the fuel out the main jet there caused by the air and also the pressure of the air coming in this tube here and pushing out the fuel means that there's plenty of vacuum strength there to pull up that fuel and ensure that there's enough fuel in this carburetor for the engine so in short both these mechanisms work together and again let's remember that this is all happening on the induction stroke so let's imagine now we're at the end of the induction stroke and we're going back up now so this is now the compression stroke and let's have a look at the differences here well of course the obvious difference is that the pistons now going up and there's no drawing in of air and fuel so we haven't got that here and because there's no air coming in there's no vacuum drawing any fuel up from here and of course because there's no inlet vacuum at all we've got the diaphragm here that's been allowed to lower under its own spring pressure and that diaphragm coming down has created that pressure there for the fuel to come this way through the one-way valve there the little valve flap and then round and then to fill this little reservoir again here and that's now replenished the stores of the fuel in that reservoir there ready to be used again in the inlet when it's needed any excess that goes into here remember is let out through this little hole here and it falls back down to the rest of the fuel in the tank and so let's have a look at the next stroke then which is the power stroke so the pistons being forced back down now after combustion has occurred and if we look now at the actual carburetor not a lot's changed as far as things go there's no vacuum in there because it's not the induction stroke and things haven't changed yet okay then so let's imagine power stroke has taken place and now we're going into exhaust stroke so the pistons coming back up now and forcing all the exhaust fumes out inside the engine let's take a look at what's happening now inside the carburetor absolutely no difference whatsoever yet but now the exhaust strokes over and we're back on the induction stroke again here we are we've got all the functionings occurring as I've explained before we've got air coming into all of these places making everything happen we've got all the vacuum back and we've got the fuel coming in from the reservoirs everything's functioning naturally then as it should do on the induction stroke and as the engine starts to run then and build up momentum this butterfly opens as I said earlier until now it's been letting a mediocre amount of air and fuel through there but because there's been a lower amount of air going through there the ratio between air and fuel has been slightly different there's been a slightly more ratio of fuel to air and that's helped so far in getting the engine going from a cold start but now of course that the engine's going okay and it's starting to warm up we don't need that extra amount of fuel there compared to air so that's opened up now and allowed the right mixture of the two to get to the engine for efficient running when the engine's warmer so if this butterfly was open too soon then when the engine was still cold it would affect the starting of the engine and the performance of the engine when it's cold but if it opened too late then it would start to put in too much fuel into a warm engine and that would choke the engine now remember this fuel vein here some fuel does actually seep out of here when the engine's running this is normally just to inject starting fuel in here but when the engine's running as i say some fuel does actually come out of here and that's because the vacuum coming up the pickup pipe here and goes this way 
and then it sucks some of that fuel out from behind the back of the primer bulb. And again, anybody who's ever had one of these primer bulbs damaged where they're leaking knows that the engine does not run right because it draws in air there into the primer bulb and that ends up in the inlet of the carburetor, which puts the inner workings in there at too much air to fuel ratio and that will not allow the engine to run correctly. Okay, so that about explains it, but what I really want to do now is let the animation run so we can see before our eyes what's going on there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll be back soon.